somewhere on a far distant planet, life has emerged and is attempting to remain dominant up until the point in which the planet inevitably is destroyed. You are playing the game Doomlings, a two to six player card tableau management game in which you're attempting to try and keep your species dominant as the ages of the planet continue. You'll be playing new trait cards, scoring points in front of you, and messing with other specific species on the planet as well. Every round, player is going to play a card, and then a age card is going to come up. Sometimes they're calamities, and other times they're just basic cards that change the way the game is played. And as you continue playing the game, you're scoring points. Up until the final card is drawn, the main catastrophe, the world-ending event, triggers and then however many points you have in front of you is going to be your total and if you have the most you're the winner it plays a little bit like sushi go without the drafting with some unique different elements for a card tableau management game i'll show you down below what it looks like how it plays and then we'll come up and discuss my review for the game doomlings a delightful card game for the end of the world this is everything you get in the game. All the different cards here, the box, and of course, the rule book here. Uh, these are different types of cards, obviously. This is your gene pool here, which will determine the number of cards you're gonna have in your hand and what you can draw up to. You'll have two distinct age types of cards, whether it be the basic ones or the catastrophes. And then you're gonna have your trait cards here. And to begin the game, give every single player one of these cards here and go ahead and start it at five. That's gonna be their basic hand size for the game. These can increase and they can decrease, however. Uh, but just for now, go ahead and place it just like that so that players can see how many cards they're gonna start the game with. And in this case, we'll do a three-player game. Uh, then you're gonna go ahead and take these cards here, the Doomling Ages cards. You'll shuffle them up, and then you're gonna deal out three of them into three piles. So three, three, and then three. The rest of these you won't need. You can set them aside. Uh, then these here are the Catastrophes. These are the bad cards that are gonna happen randomly throughout the ages. So you'll shuffle these guys up as well and place one into each of the three piles, removing the rest of the cards. And then you'll take each deck separately and shuffle it so that the cards are mixed in with that catastrophe in some way. And then finally, you're going to put these cards together and you're going to form a deck. This is your age deck. This is going to determine the number of rounds you're going to be playing. And uh, the final catastrophe is going to uh, basically have an end of game trigger. So when you actually draw the final catastrophe, there's, there's this world's end statement. You're going to follow this one here and that will trigger the end of the game. Um, go ahead and make sure you shuffle this deck here as well. This is the traits deck. This is the deck you'll be starting with. You'll shuffle this deck up here and then you're going to give every player five cards because that is how many cards they're going to start the game with based on their little gene pool here, it tells them exactly how many cards they start with. And then the final thing you're going to do is you're going to take this card here and you can go ahead and set it on top of the deck. It's basically going to remind you or let you know how many cards uh, you start with and uh, what you need to do. And it says basically until the end of the world, you're going to play a trait each turn and then you'll stabilize at the end of your turn, which is basically draw up to your hand size. And then begin the game. And to begin the game, it's rather quite simple. The birth of life card will be set aside and then from now on, beginning of every round, you're going to go ahead and take one of these age cards and flip it up and do whatever it says. And the dealer, uh, the player to the left of the dealer, or this being me over here, is going to start the game off. And these are the cards in their hand. And they can go ahead and select any of these cards and play them in front of them. All of these cards have a point value for the end of the game. This is going to symbolize how many points you have when you tally them all up. And it'll have some type of ability and a name. Uh, they'll say different things like plus one for every pair of green traits that you have. And there's different traits in the deck, whether they be green, whether they be gray, Sometimes you're going to see some blue and purple and orange and red and so on and so forth. And that's it. Once you play that card, you're going to go ahead and regroup, draw basically up to your number of cards from your gene pool here, and then pass the turn. The next player is going to go ahead and look through all of their cards and play a card down, and then they'll draw up and pass. Uh, another thing to note, too, is there are some unique dominant traits, and these you can only have two of. They'll have this little orange or this little... Uh, yellow bar around them, which will state that you can only have two of these in front of you, so if you have any more, you can't place them down. Uh, but simply, this has some unique special effect. This says at the end of the game, you'll choose a color and you get plus one bonus point for every trait of that color in your trait pile here. Just like a game like Sushi Go, this is going to be the area in which you're going to score points at the end of the game based on the numbers here, and sometimes it'll involve things like scoring pairs or multiples, so on and so forth. And then finally, the last player will go ahead and take their turn. Look their hand of cards. Uh, maybe play something like this one here. Morality. It says you may play only this trait uh, if you gain one positive value trait 
if you give one to an opponent. So you couldn't play this one here unless you had one in front of you. Maybe you'll do this one here, it's zero, but it gets plus one for every colorless trait that you have in your pool here. So the next time you play this guy here, you'll give yourself a five, and then you can go ahead and pass that to somebody else. Pretty useful. Um, or you can just simply play a really easy one, plus one of your gene pool, which will increase your five up into a six, allowing you to drop to six cards in your hand as opposed to the normal five. And that triggers the end of the round. So at the end of the round, you flip over one of these cards here, and then you're going to do whatever it says, minus one to your gene pool, so everybody's going to go ahead and lose uh, a hand size. And then it'll also say discard a card from your hand for every blue trait in your trait pile. In this case, nobody has a blue one, so you're good. If this was a World's End, which is the last catastrophe, the third one, that will trigger the end of the game and you do whatever this says. But otherwise, you'll simply keep going and keep playing cards. Until, of course, the end of the world happens, basically drawing that last catastrophe there. Maybe it would look something like this. And then you're going to go ahead and do whatever it says. Minus one for every red trait in your trait pile, and then you'll score. So, for instance, if these players all have these guys out, you would score all the points here. So you get five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten... Um, yeah, that's 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10, minus 2, which is going to be 8. Uh, this one's going to be plus 1 for every one of these, so that goes you back to 10. Plus 1 for every card in your value that has a value of 1, uh, so you get 3 more, and so on and so forth. You just tally these guys up. You do the same for all of these as well, and these as well. Subtract anything from here, and whoever has the most points is the winner of the game, Doomlings. It's rather simple, pretty straightforward game that has a lot of unique and interesting customizations with these different catastrophes and age cards, but it's, it's pretty simple as well. Doomlings is a very straightforward and simple tableau management game. On your turn, you play a card, then you drop to your maximum hand size, you pass, everyone does that, you draw a card from the ages pile, and do what it says, keep going until the third catastrophe, in which case you'll score up the points in front of you, uh, along with any bonuses or negatives due to the end of the world or triggers from your specific tableau, and whoever has the most points wins. Really straightforward. Uh, but there's a lot of combinations of cards and a ton of different ways you can score points. You're going to be trying to manipulate the different colors in the game, and as you can see, there's quite a bit of them here, and they're all going to work with each other in some way, shape, or form. They can hurt players. Uh, there's unique cards that have specific actions, like for instance, this one says after you stabilize you can draw a card there's certain passives that let you do like value this is equal the value of this is equal to every kidney in your pile so it might be worth one or two or three and if you have three of them that's worth nine points at the end of the game so most of the cards that have some type of strong value actually come with some type of caveat that you need to have in order for them to be of a value some cards hinder other cards like if you have this card it's worth five but if anybody else has this other card then both cards are worth nothing and so you have to kind of be aware of what you choose and when you choose you go for simple small ones that will progressively increase the value, straightforward ones that only maybe give you three points but have no drawbacks and can't be put into any negative or positive combinations with any other cards. You're also going to deal with ages. So for instance here with these guys here, uh, whether it be something like losing points from your gene pool or gaining them, which is nice, you want to gain point, to gain those gene pool points because that's going to uh, basically allow you to stabilize, giving you more cards in your hand at the end of the turn. And as the game progresses, you'll have less and less cards to utilize. Uh, the what's this? The Birth of Life just is an explanation card. It's the first round. It tells you to drop to five cards and uh, basically just to play a card. Uh, Galactic Rift. If you play a colorless trait, you can play another colorless trait on your turn, so allowing you to have more than one action is nice. If you hold a heroic, play it now without any restriction. Pretty good. Uh, draw a card for every color type in your trait pile, so you can draw additional cards if you have a different variety of colors, so on and so forth. There's a lot of different age cards, a lot of different catastrophe cards. Most catastrophes are bad, most aid cards help in some way, but they kind of help everybody. You can either work towards progressing your own goal or hurting everybody else in attempts to secure the best points possible. This game, if you've played Sushi Go, uh, this is very similar to that one. Uh, this one doesn't have, however, the drafting mechanic where you're going to be drawing cards and passing them. You're simply going to be utilizing your gene pool to give yourself a, a better uh, a better uh, likelihood of being able to draw more cards, and you can also utilize cards to kind of mess with other people's. Uh, so you're you're basically playing with just your own personal hand. It's a little less, I guess, interactive in that way, but it, the, the combinations are 
greatly increased in this game as far as what you can do and what cards are going to pop up. Uh, when I played this for game the first time, I wasn't sure what I was going to think about this game. It seemed pretty simple, pretty straightforward, a game for kids. But in reality, I enjoy this more than Sushi Go. Um, I know it's not really the same game because it's not really a draft game, but it feels very similar based on the tableau management. And there's so many combinations that are added to this game. The fact that it changes up every round, something new and unique happens. The artwork is great. I love the artwork in this game. It's probably one of my favorite aspects of the game is the artwork. I don't know what it what it is about it, but I just really enjoyed it. It reminds me of one of those like indie Switch games that has this, that style of artwork. Um, you know, or in the blind forest kind of thing, but it's really, really pretty. And all the little different doomlings are super cute. They're basically little balls or blobs that kind of have little genetic traits to them that will kind of improve as you place more of them out. It just feels like you're building up a little, a little bubbly army of blobs in attempts to like score the most points. It's not hyper aggressive, but there is some aggressive aspects to it. Um, for most take that games, I, I'm not a big fan when you lose turns or unable to do this or that. Uh, this can do it, but mainly it's based off of what you've done to yourself previously to cost you uh, being able to do certain things. If you can only play a green card and you don't happen to have one, yes, that's going to hinder you. Or if you can play a oh, the gray card and you can play an extra gray card, maybe you don't have a gray card in your hand, so you have to play something else and you gain, don't gain that benefit. So there is those certain things, but it does it really well in this game to where I feel like it's my fault when I didn't do the thing because I didn't think ahead that this could be a possibility. Should I save this card in case it might be useful for one of the different catastrophes or world events? Or do I play it now? Should I use these dominant trait cards to drop out and give me some type of boost? Or should I utilize the ones later that might benefit me at the, for an end of game effect. Holding onto cards can be useful or hurtful because players can mess with those cards, take them away, and of course they can mess with your tableau as well. There's certain traits or certain doomlings that will affect what you have in play and how they kind of uh, affect what you've got going on. I'll read a couple of the doomlings too to give you an idea. The kidneys, like I said before, you get more points for the more of them that are in play. When you discard an endurance uh, from your trait pile, you can return it to your trait pile. So if this guy, he's not worth a lot, but if he goes away for some reason, he gets to come back, which is nice. Fear, he's just worth one point, but he's also colorless, and there's a lot of cards that work in combination with that. Uh, auto Mimicry, you can discard him or her from your trait pile to protect from another trait from being discarded. So if somebody tries to mess with one of your big guys, you get rid of this little guy here, and it protects you in some unique way. Uh, Pepper, at the, at the end of the game, if you don't like the final catastrophe, you can discard it and draw a new one. Nice. It's only three points, but it has some unique values, and so on and so forth. There's a lot of different cool things that are involved in this game with the different replayability and the choices you can make in the game. It's something that I would easily pick up and play again. It's something that I would easily choose to have uh, played with me, my family, and even my friends. It's light, it's quick, it's simple. You guys probably won't like this game if you don't like games that involve any type of player negative interaction. It does have that. There's some times where you're not going to be able to do certain things, and it has that luck of the draw uh, to an extent extent as well. You might not draw the best cards where somebody else may, uh, and it might bother you for, for a certain period of time until you start getting better cards and they don't. But realistically, it's, it feels really close. The game's scoring is always deeply, like, like it's really close. Like, maybe 30 points, 33 and 35. You don't ever feel like you're in complete dead last, like you have no opportunity to win this game. You at least feel like you're doing something, and all the cards have so many cool, unique combinations that you can come back from a loss and make it into a victory in, in a matter of no time at all and if you don't uh, if you want to play again you can it's so quick 20 minutes or so and if you don't want to you can go ahead and set it aside and play something larger it's a great little filler game it's something that i'll see myself bringing out more and more and i'll probably play this game along with sushi go and to some extent to show somebody about tableau management and take that and then of course something like tableau management and drafting regardless of if you're interested in picking up the game doom links take a look down below link in the description for me i really really had a good time with this game everybody who played this with me really enjoyed it but i think i enjoyed it the most uh, some of my friends who didn't like take that games so were kind of just like yeah it's fine it doesn't actually offend me as much uh, you know offensive as far as like being aggressively attacked in some way uh, but for me Mm. Ah, that Doomlings. I, I, I just like this game a lot. Thank you guys so much for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Doomlings. If you're interested in picking up the game, there's a link down below in the description. You can also go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Hit that subscribe bell button, as well as, of course, this the, the regular red button. Both of those help. And, of course, with the notifications, you'll see more and more of our videos as they come out. We produce at least one every day, except for on the weekends. You can also check out my wife's game, Moonshell, a mermaid game. It is a mermaid game where you are trying to collect shells, placing them into certain areas 
this on your treasure chest board from the main board, uh, completing open and closed objectives, utilizing special unique mermaid powers and the signature mermeeple. And if you like, there's a link down below for that as well. March 2nd, don't forget. Thank you, Patreon members and Discord members. I greatly appreciate you guys, and I hope you have fun with that painting competition. If you'd like to join in on us, go ahead and check out our Discord link as well. All right, guys, that's all I got for you this time. And as always, I look forward to the end of the world with you. I don't look forward to the end of the world. I hope the world doesn't end, actually. <laughs> <laughs>